All right, guys, today we're gonna get some muddy feet walking on through here, but uh, let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, it is Sunday afternoon here. I decided I'd come up on the hill and go for a little bit of a walk here. Uh, just because it's Sunday, uh, the past couple days, the deer hunters have been swarming the place. Uh, last minute archery and flint walk is in season now. So I think the guys that didn't get deer are uh, taking advantage of the uh, extended season as far as that goes. But uh, anyway, today's video, uh, I am standing in the back uh, cornfield as I referred to to it in past videos um, you guys will know that have been following me that this field yielded uh, the highest on the entire farm for as bad as 2018 was uh, as far as the corn goes this field was the star at 120 bushel to the acre <laughs> so a um, couple reasons why we decided that uh, the reason that it was 120 versus the rest of the farm which a lot of the fields were like 110 117 102 for field averages um, this one was 120 uh, mainly because it's south sided that way south it gets the sun more sunshine uh, when the sun sets uh, over that way is kind of west so you're getting sunlight uh, as opposed to once you crest this hill and you go, get to a flat spot and then it dips down north sided fields um, or northeasterly sided fields it's it's not as much uh, sun the other thing is with it being so steep and so rolly uh, a lot of the excess can run off so what I want to talk about today is runoff. <laughs> you guys remember my regions of Pennsylvania video when I was talking about uh, how these fields uh, kind of are and why we can't farm more land here than we could. Uh, I had referred to it as the Badlands and that's what that is down in there. That can never be farmed. That is a swampy, almost like a wetland. And then I actually, if I quit talking and be quiet, I can hear that small tiny creek that barely ever runs down in there, I can hear it roaring uh, just from this year with all the rain and the water. Um, there's a tree there that blew over that was that saturated. So we've got that. <laughs> But anyway, this is kind of the end of what is farmable. Everything down in there is just badlands until you get back up through the hill. It's too steep. You can see some logging roads. But anyway, we're here to talk about this uh, cornfield that did the best this year. So let's get into it. Okay, so the soybeans did okay in this field last year. My first year here last year, this was uh, all soybeans. They did pretty good. It was a pretty nice field, pretty nice stand. I had a lot of weed problems uh, that I had learned my lesson from 2017, went with a different herbicide for 2018, and uh, definitely did a lot better with the beans as far as weed control this year. Uh, corn <coughs> did, uh, <laughs> you guys remember from my field tour, this field did not look so good. Um, and it's surprising to me. It really is but I think that just goes to show it's not the stalks that are making the grain uh, even though you want good stalk integrity uh, these are kind of spindly little corn stalks they're not near as thick or as full or as heavy as uh, up on top of the hill but if this did 120 and up there did 117 it doesn't really matter what the stalks were uh, they didn't go down so well there's less trash in this field now there was less stock it was a little bit shorter corn um, still put the put the kernels on and made a nice field of corn so this is steep this is one of the steeper fields uh, i don't want to say it's the steepest <laughs> and the uh, height if i were to walk down actually let's do that quick i'll come right back with you all right i'll give you this view you can kind of we're at the bottom here you can kind of look up uh, not only is it steep uh, going up that way along the hill you'll see it it has a dip here maybe <laughs> that you can see on camera then a rise then a dip then a rise then a dip so not only are you are on the hill this way but you're going like this as you're going across the field so um, runoff is definitely an issue in 2011 I can remember Hurricane Lee this field was uh, washed uh, with ditches that deep that I could step in the ditches and it was almost up to uh, above my knee that the soil in in these dips had washed away and down here and you may not be able to see it on camera, but from all the years of erosion in this field, the, the soil worked its way down and has made kind of a, a lift here. It's a little bit of a rise from the soil coming down. I guess you could argue that eventually the hill will level itself with the erosion, <laughs> but uh, your topsoil at the top end is gonna get pretty darn thin and down here it's gonna get pretty thick. But like I was saying with the Badlands, there you can see some standing water. It kind of drops off and this is just a, a muddy if i were to step in that it'd be like quicksand it's just all water in here because this is all the area from this runoff from not only this field but the field above it so 
like I say, with the ridge and valley system, you're going to have areas like this, which you will in other, other areas too. This is kind of common. It's nothing unique. But uh, anyway, let's talk a little bit about the uh, what I'm trying to do here with it. Okay, so 2019 will mark the third year of true no-till here for PA Farms on this farm. Uh, third year in a row, consecutively, true no-till. Uh, I say it all the time, the only steel that's in the ground is the planter discs uh, you'll notice the trash on top here we're starting to, this is just from the corn uh, you're not going to see any of the trash from the beans last year that's long since gone but uh, this is good uh, this trash here um, you guys know this when it rains the drops hit the ground um, if it hits bare soil it's like a little explosion and loose it, it dislodges the soil particles those soil particles become loose and are prone to wash away with trash and residue on top the rain comes down it hits this it shields the soil from the uh, the raindrops and uh, there's no soil little explosion of soil and the particles can kind of stick together um, we've got all the root balls and the root masses here left uh, intact from last year <laughs> So some of these tore off, they're getting kind of rotten, but you have all these root balls to help hold uh, 27,000 kernel population. I don't know if that's what's here, but you've got, you figure if there's that many corn plants with roots, um, it definitely is going to help hold the soil on this hill. Uh, there is still some bare ground. We're still not there yet to get a nice uh, yields and stock quality. Uh, we're still not there to get it totally covered. I did want to incorporate cover crops. It didn't work out my first year or my second year. So if that's something I want to do, I really got to get on top of that. It's just how late. It's how late they come to harvest, how late I get planted. And it just is what it is. So um, we're going to keep trying to work towards getting cover crops. I know that is the next part of this uh, no-till and the roots and the organic matter. But you'll take notice with uh 70 what do we have 78.23 for the year uh tomorrow they're forecasting another inch of rain there's a hundred percent chance of rain tomorrow and we're supposed to get another inch so it'll be 79.23 we might get close to 80 inches so uh, if we haven't gotten it already i'm just going by my app but uh so with another inch of rain coming um all right so the guys that do my uh, planting, harvesting, and the guys that sell the grain to, you guys know that they uh, take my grain, they feed Angus steers. PA Farms is in the beef business, technically feeding the beef, <laughs> supporting, I'm a support uh, for the beef industry. But anyway, um, those guys are kind of my standard because they farm how I wish I could be doing things. They've been no-tilling long enough now that they have been seeing the benefits of no-till. Um, they have steer manure and poultry uh, broiler manure applied spring and fall and they do cover crops in every field and not just rye cover crop but a whole cocktail of uh, different things i saw tillage radishes and all bunch of different stuff so they're farming kind of how i would want to farm um, their ground and their soils are better than mine but their corn yield, the one guy told me that they did 170 this year. So if this field did 120, I'm 50 bushels behind. Um, kind of the standard of where I'd like to be. Again, they've had the same weather, um, but those guys are farming kind of how I wish I could be doing it here. Um, but like I said, it could have been worse in this valley. I've been hearing yields as low as 60 bushel to the acre. So at 120, uh, that is definitely a blessing to get that in this field. And there is nothing washed here. Um, two years of no-till done with all the rain I am looking that's why I wanted to walk out here today just looking around there is no gutters nothing is washed I'm walking right up one of the ditches right now let me go over there that's a low spot I'll come back with you okay so I don't know if you can see it on camera the Sun is going down this is where it starts to drop down and we have a little ditch here and then it rises back up there's a very little bit here you can see a little bit little bit of erosion from there to there um, very very little maybe a inch if I had a guess and did that make it all the way down I'm just looking and no it did not make it all the way down to the bottom it is bunched up right there so it did erode a little bit here with two years of no-till but it's not gone it's still here so <clears throat> another thing was just the way the crop rotation worked out it was good to have corn in here versus beans on a wet year, the corn roots are definitely going to hold more soil than the soybean roots. Whew, I'm out of breath <laughs> walking up this hill. Uh, it, it's got to be at least 
I don't know. I'm just looking at least 70, 70 feet from top to bottom here. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, and then you get out through there and it drops off and then it's like a flat spot out to the trees. So, um, yeah, I just want to check this field out. Uh, hope you guys found it interesting. You know what? I think I'm going to walk down to the creek and see how that's flowing. Let's look at that yet. And then, uh, I'll call it quits for today. Whew, and I got to walk this winter. I got to walk and do some walking or something because I have gained 40 pounds just in the last year. But see what I mean? Wetlands, standing water. This is all like a bog in here. Uh, it's the edge of this hay field. You get into here and it's just nothing you can do with it. I suppose you could kind of angle it down and drain it, but the soils themselves aren't very good. There's not a lot of topsoil. You'd probably have to put a couple hundred tons of lime on it just to bring it back to life. But uh, let's get down to this creek. All right, so this field you guys will remember as the chicken manure field. This is a hay field. This is going into corn. It was prepped for corn with all that manure. Uh, and I just cannot believe how wet this is right now. Holy cow. It is just, I've never seen it like this uh, with this much water. I mean, it is, of course, with the freezing and the thawing and then the rain during the day, it's not helping, but it is unreal how wet this is. So let's get down here to this creek that's, this creek down here, is barely ever running. I've been watching it now for quite a few years and you never really hear it uh, or see anything in it. Uh, there's some round bales down in here. Now that tree, you'll take notice. That's a result of saturated ground conditions and some windy weather. Uh, that tree was uprooted and fell over. I do see some more down in here. Uh, this is another area of badlands. There's never anything you're gonna be able to do with this short of fencing it off and putting some goats in. Um, it's just uh, sticker bushes, very steep. Uh, this is like a cliff out here. Man, I should have wore my rubber boots. I can't believe the amount of water in this field. Never seen it like this. This is... All right, so this is just a dry, that's not thunder, and it's just, I could hear it with no leaves on the trees. This is never running. I mean, this is always dry. See, it's a cliff down into it. It's a creek down here. <laughs> there's a round bale. What's left of it, it kind of collapsed. Um, there was some, yeah, there's one down there. I can see the remains. There's one down further. So this is uh, usually dry in this little, see, you could never clear this to farm. It's a little bit of a water at the water's edge it's a little bit flat then it just goes up and goes up and it, it's like a mountain so trees are your best uh, and only only possibility there but uh, i am going to show you guys a spot where it could be cleared where i think it was cleared in the 50s we'll get to that i'm going to do some walking around this winter but yeah i'm just showing you this creek this is interesting and i just looking at it it has been really uh flowing at times this is like flash flooding that was one of the things i forgot to mention in my video on the regions of pennsylvania with the ridge in the valley you do have a lot of flash floods because of the mountains and i do see signs of that all them all that debris bunched up like there this was flowing heavy uh looking down through there i can see where it was taking some of the bank away um, but th yeah this little stream is hardly ever here i mean it's not even on the map as far as an active waterway so, all right, I'll leave you there. I don't need to put every all my thoughts into one video here. But yeah, this is the chicken manure field. Hopefully we can get it in the corn. And uh, hopefully with the no-till and uh, crop rotation, we shouldn't have any erosion. But man, it's wet out here. So, all right, guys, have a good evening.